In this video, we're going to go over the basics of parametric box joint with even fingers and even spacing, regardless of how we decide to put our material thickness, our width and length of our parts, the fingers will always space out evenly amongst those. And uh, we'll look at making a right angle joint with these two pieces. We can see it's comprised of two components, uh, a male and female joint. We're going to open up a new document, create a new component, and create another new component. Let's call the first one our male component. Let's call the second one our female component, just so we can create distinction. I'm going to start off with the male, and I'm going to sketch a two-point rectangle. We're going to create a rectangle, the overall dimensions. So for now, I'm just going to put in some arbitrary dimensions so I can remember them. I'm going to extrude this, and let's say my material is a quarter inch. So now what I can do is go to my parameters. I'm going to create a user parameter. We're going to call this one width, and that'll be six inches. We'll create another user parameter. That'll be length. We'll call that 8 inches. Create another user parameter, and we'll call that thick or thickness, and that was 0.25. And we'll hit OK. Now when we drop down our sketch, we know that D1 is going to be the length. And D2 is the width. For the extrude, that's going to be our thickness. Looks the same. That's good. I'm going to draw my fingers on this edge going up the Y axis. And to do that, again, I'm going to draw a two-point rectangle on top of this surface here. I'm going to just draw it out and then use my D key to dimension. This line must be the thickness of the material. So when we put our object at a 90 degree angle, the material must line up perfectly. So I'll enter thickness there. This dimension here has to equal this dimension. So if we look at our layout, it's going to be divisible over this width. So we'll have a certain number of fingers and then a certain number of spaces, and then we can divide by those. We're going to have an odd number of fingers and an even number of spaces. This box I'm drawing now is going to be the space. So I'm just going to dimension that out. And then I'm going to take this point and this point, and I need to make sure it's that same dimension. So at least right now, those two are equal. Everything is constrained. I'm going to stop my sketch and extrude. This extrusion is going to be through all. I'll flip it, and we can see it's a cut. I'll hit OK. So I've got one of my teeth here, but I need to pattern that across here. And before I do that, these dimensions don't totally make sense. So let's go back to the parameters. Let's add a parameter. We're going to need the number of fingers. This is going to be unitless. Right now, let's just say we want six fingers, and I'll hit OK. My next sketch here, this dimension needs to match this finger right here. So when I'm looking at my thickness and this distance here, this is going to be the width. Divided by 2 times 
the number of fingers for the spacing and the finger. I'm going to add one since the leftover fingers are odd. And this will still match that. And we could copy and paste. But that means that that spacing will always match. I could make them the same or just keep it like this. All right. Our next step is to create a pattern. Create a pattern and a rectangular pattern. We're going to select features and select that last feature. Our direction, you can select this line or you can select the Y axis. We're going to choose spacing. And the quantity is going to be the number of fingers. Our distance is going to be the width of the material divided by the number of the fingers plus a half of one because we have an odd number of fingers. Our second set is just going to be one. We only want one row. I'm going to hit OK. And we've just created our first set of fingers. I'm going to turn off this part. First, I'm going to check my parameters. And we can see here that for our pattern, we've added 1.5 number of fingers over the width and then same thing here we have the finger plus the spacing plus one let's move on to the next i'm gonna hide that part and activate the next i'm going to choose a two-point rectangle on the same plane and i'm going to basically follow the same strategy to get started but now i have my user parameters I'm going to extrude. And hit OK. Now, I'm going to still draw on that top face, but I'm going to start my drawing here. This dimension we know must be the material thickness. And this dimension must be the same as before. And that was our width divided by two times the number of fingers plus one. That should give us that same number. I'm going to extrude. I'm going to select that newly drawn shape. Remember, now we're doing the opposites. And that's going to be extruded all the way through. I'm going to flip it so it's a cut and hit OK. Now it's time for a similar pattern. I'm going to create a pattern, a rectangular pattern. I'll select my feature and my direction. Again, I'll choose the Y axis. Make sure it's on spacing. My quantity now. Let's put number of fingers in. Our distance has to be the same, so it's the width over number of fingers plus 0.5, one and a half times the number of fingers. But if we look at the top view, notice our spacing is off. We're actually missing one more since we're now creating the odd number of spaces instead of fingers. So we will add one, and that should complete uh, one, and hit OK. It looks like all the fingers line up. Let's activate both components, and we can see they look perfect.
I'm going to put component color on and activate the top level component so I can see both colors. Okay, and we can check our parameters on the female piece. Our, ex our part is the same dimensions. Our sketch, which is the whole, doesn't have a distance away from the edge because it's on the edge. And that's thick width and two times the number of fingers plus one. That's the same as up here. Same distance. That's the spacing plus the finger. And then we add one since our position. Our extrude. And then on this one, since we're doing the opposite, we're going to add one. Here we just have the number of fingers. Here we're adding one since we're doing the spacing. And the division is the same, so we're taking the total width and dividing it by number of fingers plus 0.5. Same as before. Now, if I'd like to, let's say, change to eight fingers, I'll hit OK, and our parts have changed accordingly. I'm going to save this at this point. The last step is to lock this into a joint position. I'm going to assemble a joint and I want to make sure that these lock in and it's easy to do on the ends. So we want to make sure we select the right faces. I'm going to keep this flat and bring this to 90. So I'm going to use that point there. And I'm going to lock it to that point there. And now I have a rigid joint. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I will always have my joint. You can see the joint showed up in the browser. I can hide the actual joint itself. And if I go back to my parameters, let's say I change this to 14 and hit OK. There's my 14 teeth and my joint is still perfectly lined up. I'll save this at this point. This is now complete.